Is it romance? Is it fantasy? Maybe it's romanticy. Romanticy is a new kid genre on the block, and it's exploded in popularity. It actually attempts to blend two genres, romance and fantasy. It is something that appeals to the fans of both without leaving either out in the cold. But is romanticy just a publishing buzzword for something that already exists? A cute hashtag-friendly portmanteau referring to either romantic fantasy or fantasy romance? Or is it a whole new genre? And what, if anything, is the difference between those other two genres, fantasy romance and romantic fantasy? Ah! In this video, I'll unpack the whole shebang and also dig into how we, as world builders, writers, and game masters, can embrace this trend to find a magical love connection with our audiences, our readers, and our players. <laughs> to start with, let's try to land on a definition. What is romanticy? Romanticy is a subgenre which combines elements of romance and fantasy. Although the term has mostly been applied to books so far, it can also encompass movies, TV series, games, and other media. The appeal of romanticy lies in its strong heroines, its intricate fantasy world building, and the intense romantic relationships that are critical to the story. But as I mentioned before, there are two similar genres already in the field, fantasy romance and romantic fantasy. So what's the difference between those? And are they the same as romanticy? Fantasy romance is primarily a romance, in a fantasy setting or with fantasy elements included. Romance, and its associated tropes and mores, is the core of this genre, and the fantasy adjective defines the trappings and set dressing of the romance story. Fantasy romance stories generally follow a beat sheet plot structure, which you can find in Gwen Hayes' Romancing the Beat. It may use a first-person point of view, and often in novels, it alternates chapters between romantic leads. And, like romance, each book in a fantasy romance series usually follows a different couple. If your romanticy story sounds more like this, consider using fantasy romance to describe or pitch it as well. On the other hand, we have romantic fantasy. This is primarily a fantasy story following those tropes and story conventions, but it includes a strong romantic subplot as part of the hero's adventure. These stories typically use the hero's journey plot structure or something similar. The romantic interest or romantic pairings among the main characters may change. And unlike a fantasy romance, a happily ever after or a happy for now ending is not guaranteed. Sequels are more likely to focus on the same main character regardless of their relationship status. Romantic fantasy stories are often written in the third-person point of view. Romantic fantasy often has longer word counts too, again, more like epic fantasy. If this feels more like what you have in mind or what you're creating, consider using romantic fantasy to describe your work. So with that settled, we can get back to romanticy. Ideally, a romanticy story gives equal or near equal weight to the heroic fantasy plot and the romantic relationship progression. If you can remove either element and still have a complete satisfying story, you may not be fulfilling everyone's expectations. It might be best to think of romanticy as a spectrum, with romance and fantasy at either end. Essentially, it's a messy spectrum of steamy hearts and stabby swords, and as with many fledgling genres, the lines are not clearly defined. If you're trying to use the genre to describe your own stories or RPG campaigns, you might offer people more clarity by also positioning your work as either fantasy romance or romantic fantasy. Now we're clear on the differences between romanticy, romantic fantasy, and fantasy romance, let's unpack the romanticy genre in more detail. Digging into common tropes and story elements is one of the best ways to understand a genre, and also identify it in the wild. Here are a few of the most common tropes in romanticy fiction. To start with, a typical setting for romanticy is either a fairy tale style world or a more edgy world filled with fey courts and fairy kingdoms. In fact, many romanticy books are clear retellings of familiar childhood fairy tales or traditional folk tales, like The Wrath and the Dawn, a retelling of The Thousand and One Nights. Or how about the TV show Once Upon a Time, that in 2011 was described as fantasy, adventure, drama, romance, but might now be called romanticy. And of course, along with this fairy or fey world-building setup, the power of destiny, prophecy, fate, or mysterious forces beyond our ken aren't far behind. 
The heroes or heroines are often the subject of a portentous destiny. They might be star-touched, cursed, bestowed with mighty powers, or born under the twin stars. Whatever that means in their worlds. This destiny often places the main character as much at a disadvantage as an advantage. For example, in The Serpent and the Wings of Night, the heroine grows up as the adopted human daughter of the nightborn vampire king. Or as the neighbours say, lunch. With romance as one of the twin-beating hearts of the romanticy genre, strong, interesting characters are critical. After all, it's all about human interest, even when we're not exactly dealing with humans. And a regular trope of romanticy is the strong, independent heroine. This protagonist is often isolated from her family and forced to become competent, or even hyper-competent, and she's often deeply paranoid about stranger danger. Although, as we said before, she also tends to be an outsider in some way, and often in very real danger from her everyday surroundings. I mean, is it really paranoia if everyone is out to get you? But now we get to one of the key romance tropes that infiltrates the romanticy genre. The star-crossed lovers. Think Romeo and Juliet, but with fangs, wings, fur, or what have you. With all that fairy destiny floating around, it's natural that this trope would turn up. And of course, that's a compelling conflict that brings both the fantasy world-building and the romance elements together. The main characters can't be together because the world-building is standing in their way. This acts as a great counter to, and often quickly overwhelming, mutual attraction, and provides a very good reason the main characters absolutely positively can't be together. Another related trope, of course, is the secret magical loophole, or what I like to refer to as secret option number three. Often, that's how this star-crossed lover issue is resolved. And speaking of reasons they can't be together, a similar trope of star-crossed lovers is the enemies-to-lovers archetype. Falling for the villain is exactly what your mother told you not to do, but it adds complex moral conflict to the romantics plot. A caveat here, though. The villain usually turns out to not be such a monster after all. Usually cursed, controlled, or just misunderstood. A Court of Thorns and Roses, where the heroine is kidnapped by the male lead, is a classic touchpoint of the genre. Or how about Beauty and the Beast? One of my favourite elements of romanticy, though, has nothing to do with romance at all. It's straight out of fantasy. The found family. Yes, our heroine started out alone, downcast, and doomed by fate, but as she adventures through this realm, she makes real close friendships. This is a classic element taken from fairy tales, where good deeds performed by the hero often lead to successes later on in the story. Our heroine ends the story not only with, usually, a happy ever after, but with a bunch of new besties too. So now you know what the genre is, let's talk tips for romanticy worldbuilding, writing, and GMing. Here are some of the critical things to consider when you're preparing your romanticy novel or RPG campaign. Number one, of course, is worldbuilding. If you're choosing romanticy as your genre, you'll be creating a fantasy world of some kind. So consider if you want to go the typical route of fairy and fae, or explore something a bit more unusual. Diving into lesser-known local myths and legends can be a simple way to shake this up, or you might want to create something completely new. On the other hand, make sure you leave space for the romance in your world building. Fancy the idea of star-crossed lovers? You'll need factions for that. Use the organisation and culture ethnicity templates on World Anvil for a ton of guidance and world-building prompts. You might also choose to world-build taboos or mores that feed into your romance story. For example, magical users cannot marry non-magic users, or royalty cannot marry commoners. This will help you set up star-crossed lovers really easily. And of course, you'll need to keep track of your world-building too. Whether it's tracking complex family trees or developing Romeo and Juliet's warring fairy factions, you'll need a place to manage your world-building plots and characters. From relationship tracking to interactive maps to a full novel writing software and campaign manager, World Anvil helps you create your ideal romanticy setting and plots. Keep track of everything, and if you choose, share part or all of your work with your readers and players too. The next thing to consider for romanticy is tone and sticks. These are critical for defining what kind of story you're telling, and the options along the romanticy scatter plot can vary wildly, from cosy, low-stakes stories to emotionally gutting, tragic tales of grief and betrayal. Some consider the witchy rom-com trend also to be part of romanticy. Light, cosy stories and the dark fairy tale romances are also often included under this umbrella 
As you're planning your work, think about these adjacent and overlapping genres and consider which of them appeals to you most. And your ideal audience too. Do you want them to feel warm and cozy or sobbing into their pages? The world building meta is a great place to define these two. And since we're on meta subjects, let's talk about the steaminess quotient. Romance can vary from vanilla and mild to hot, steamy, and spicy. And romanticy, as a subgenre of romance, is the same. On the one hand, many books shelved as romanticy are intended for young adults or YA. These works may contain mature content, but often include less or less explicit violence and sexual content. On the other hand, there's plenty of romanticy that bodice rips its way right into the erotic fiction section. Decide what level of steaminess you are comfortable with, and what your audience, that's your players and your readers, are comfortable with too. And if you're a GM, I have a whole video about how to manage romance and sexy times at the table so both you and your players feel comfortable. Of course, as I mentioned earlier, romanticy is strongly character-driven, so make sure your characters are three-dimensional and relatable. Give them strengths, weaknesses, and personal goals that drive their romantic and heroic journeys. And remember, characters are a product of the environment that shapes them, so ensure you dig into their backstories, past points, and origins. The character template is full of prompts to help you with fleshing out rich characters. And this is particularly important for romanticy, as it's an expression of how the world building and the romance come together. If you're DMing an RPG, you might also want to give additional guidance to your players about backstory elements, like romantic experience and important past romantic entanglements. It'll build more context and importance to those elements of the story right into their characters. And of course, romance genres, more than most, rely on a collection of tropes and story beats, and romanticy is no stranger to cliches and predictable plot devices. Keep your storytelling fresh and original by considering how you can subvert expectations, bring in surprise elements, and engage your audience with unexpected twists. Just make sure there's a happily ever after or a happily for now ending, unless you want your audience to riot. So now we've decoded the romanticy genre, let's look through some examples. Here are a few suggestions to get you started, and there are even more listed in the blog linked in the description. So, romanticy as a genre, yay or nay? Let me know in the comments. Please like this video if you are secretly my Starcrest lover. And subscribe for more world building, writing, and dungeon mastering stuff. Now grab your hammer and go fall in love with world 